In this lecture, we're looking at the process of taking Cornell notes by actually practicing using a sheet of Cornell notes paper and um, listening to some information and then figuring out how to use that information and the note paper that you have to form um, some notes that you can use later for review that will be helpful for you in organizing new information and helping to keep yourself um, with a record of the material that we're covering in class. So you should have a sheet of paper that looks something like the Cornell note sheet that you see pictured here. Um, our paper is slightly different in class. Our topic and objective box is more about this size and the rest of this will on your paper will say name, class, period, date. So go ahead and fill that part in at this point. Fill in your name. The class would be um, whatever topic or subject you're in. So it could be English or algebra or chemistry or world history or whatever. So fill in the appropriate class. And then the period is whatever class period you have me. And then the date. Um, our Cornell notes sheet does not have this particular box, essential question. Um, you could certainly add in any objective or standard that we're covering in class that um, the notes are specific to, um, but when you're filling in your notes paper, you won't see that particular box. Um, the notes that I use, the format that I have on my computer, don't include that part, so I just didn't want you to wonder where um, what yours was missing. Um, the topic or objective, so right here, um, for this set of notes is going to be the process of Cornell notes, which is kind of a long topic. So you can go ahead and abbreviate it just by saying Cornell notes in that topic or objective box. So we're going to look at a couple of different ways to use this particular organizational tool. Um, the Cornell method is a very specific system that's very well organized and it helps to make sure that you are um, using the information that you're learning and writing it down in such a way that it'll be useful to you in the future and it will be easy for you to access the information going forward. So what I want to do is show you here an example of some information you might see in a text or in um, a class lecture, for example. So this is just a random set of chemistry notes. And what you'll see almost always in a text or um, in a PowerPoint lecture or um, in a lecture in class, maybe on the board, um, you'll see there's almost always some kind of heading in this particular example, the heading is binary ionic compounds. So um, when you are reading notes or listening to notes, it's important to make sure that you are keeping yourself organized. Um, so you have sections in your notes that help you to identify the material you need to remember or learn. That's what this left-hand column on the Cornell paper is for. This column is for titles, oh, I lost my eye there, it's for headings like binary ionic compounds, it's for uh, main ideas, it's for new vocabulary, and it is for guiding questions. So as you are taking your notes, you're writing down information in whatever form you like to use in this big body section over here. This section says notes at the top and it takes up about two thirds of the paper because that's where you'll be doing most of your writing. You can use any form you want. So if you take your notes in bullet format, you just draw a little bullet point and then you write, that's completely fine, you can do that. If you are an outliner, like you do number one, and then you write, and then maybe you write a letter A below it for the next idea, go ahead and continue doing that. Um, if you have some kind of a shorthand method that you like to use, I use a lot of abbreviations in my own personal notes because it makes things 
quicker for me. Um, so you can go ahead and do that here too. This is the part of the note paper where you should be writing down all the information that I'm giving you. So if you need to at this point, go ahead and pause and write that information in this part of your notes. Write what material goes here, the fact that you can put it in any format you want, um, that some other important things you want to remember about the structure of your notes is that you should always be clear. So however your format is written, whatever you like to use, just make sure that it's clear, that it is easy to read. So when you go back tomorrow, next week, next month, you can read what you wrote. Um, leave yourself space. We will always discuss our notes in class and you need to have some space for where you can add information. There will always be new information coming from lecture, from the book, from examples and practice that we do. So you should always leave some space within the body of your notes so that you can add information in after the fact. And um, we will be writing questions that you need uh, more information on. And so you need to leave room to answer those questions within the body of your notes. So those are kind of the highlights of the ways you should be taking notes. So these are the keys to the notes. Um, some other things that are important to remember is that you should always make sure to include anything the professor or teacher or text um, has in bold or in some way has repeated multiple times because that tells you this information is important. However, you are juniors or seniors in high school. Just writing down the bold information is never, ever, ever going to be enough. The bold information gives you a very, very narrow picture of what's important, but it never includes any kind of detail. And I can tell you with 100% certainty, your tests will always involve detail. They will not just be the bold information. So those are things that are important to remember. I'm gonna go ahead and scoot this out of the way, maybe. There we go. Then I'm gonna pull this one back in. So all of that information, all of these keys to your notes should be here in this notes section of your Cornell paper as you're listening. What you're going to be putting over here in the left-hand side is what I said earlier, titles. So things like what we just said over here, the keys to the notes. This phrase could be included in the main I this questions column right here because that is a, um, it's a heading for that group of information. Um, you could put the term Cornell Notes, for example, over here too, and then the definition of Cornell Notes could be here in the body of the notes. All of those things are helping you to organize the way you're thinking and the way that you save that information for later. Um, at the end of every lecture that we do online, I will ask you to um, be sure and come to class with some questions for discussion the next time I see you. Those questions should always be written in these sections, in the questions column. The entire question should be written here, and then all of this space should remain empty so that you have room to answer that question when we get back to class. The last thing we're gonna talk about is this final box, this summary box. That's the very last thing you're gonna do when um, you've finished taking a set of notes. Oftentimes you can do that in class. After we've talked, you can write your summary. And the summary includes several things. It includes three to five, at least, complete sentences. That means they are full thoughts, they are not abbreviations, they are not initials and symbols, they are full and complete thoughts written in proper English. 
and it should include the most important details. So for example, your summary of this lecture might say, Cornell notes are important because they help us to organize our thoughts in a way that will be useful to us later. Cornell notes have very specific um, ways of writing information and all information has a, has a particular place that it goes on the page. There you go, that's my summary. It's important that your summary include detail and information from the material. It should not summarize the process. No summary should say, these notes were about how the body makes food. These notes were really long. The body makes food in about nine different ways. Those ways are complicated, period, I'm done. There's no detail there, there's no specifics, there's no actual information that is of any use to you. You want the summary to be useful to you in the future so that you, when you're studying, you can look at the summary, see what the few major details of that particular set of notes were, and then you know which notes to study, which notes you understand, which notes you have some questions on, etc. So that summary is really important and I will spend a lot of time helping you develop and refine and improve your summarizing skills. So that is it for this set of notes. Um, please come to class tomorrow with at least two questions. It can be about the process of Cornell Notes. It can be about the grading of Cornell Notes. It can be about the organization of Cornell Notes. It can be anything at all about note taking and my expectations for your notes in class. You will be turning your notes in, so make sure it's the best work you can do. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.